Hi guys, how's it going? Ivano here and today I want to let you in on a little secret trick that I've been using ever since 7.0 launched. Now, if you've seen my videos, then you might have already noticed this and I haven't really seen anyone else using this, at least in the way that I am. So today I want to share with you guys so that you can use it as well. Now, what am I talking about? I am, of course, talking about using a third party tool to see who is doing the most damage or healing during a running war zone and even track any enemy cooldown that you want almost in real time. So the software that I'm talking about is called Exile Star Pass and you can download it on xparse.com. I will, of course, put the link in the description below. Now, before we get into this tool, in order to be able to use it, you need to first jump into game and turn on combat logging. To do that, simply click on escape, go to preferences, combat logging, and then make sure that enable combat logging to file is selected. Next, you want to download star pass, open it, and then go to the tool, go to settings. You find that up here. So it's file and then settings. And then here you find the log directory. Make sure that that is correct. Now this will depend on your installation path. Mine is exactly here. I will also put this in the description below. Just make sure that you change your username. Mine is admin. So now that you have this copied, just maybe two words about how this works. So almost any action that you do in this game is written into what is called the combat log. So when you are hitting an enemy in a war zone or you're hitting that training dummy, that is written into a text file, which is called the combat log. And then star parse is just reading these combat logs and then aggregates that info. But now comes the interesting part because star parse has different features and we'll go through them one by one now and explain how to set them up. So the first one is called personal stats. It looks a little bit like this. Once I click on personal stats down here, I see this info. I see the last combat that I engaged in, how long the combat lasted, how much damage I did, how much damage per second I did, and even how much, uh, how many crits I had. So let's say I want to track my combat with this dummy. I simply open star parse like this, and I click on parse up here. Now the button is green, and I start hitting this dummy, and you will see the numbers down here updating almost in real time. This is how I measure how much damage I'm doing, and this is how I'm testing buffs or nerfs or which spec does more damage than another spec. Okay, so this one is pretty simple. You can swap it around. If you're a healer, you want to measure your healing, you can swap it around here. You can also have a little bit more details if you want to measure your threat. Mostly, I'm using this one for a DPS. That's pretty simple and usually good enough. The second big feature is called Rate Damage. Now, this one is interesting because ever since Legacy of the Sith 7.0, this will automatically track everyone. I think it's within 70 meters or something. So to reiterate, this will track the damage numbers of everyone in your war zone on your team and the enemy team. So you can see during the game who is the top DPS on the enemy team and then focus them. So that's very important that you set this up. Same is true for healing. So this will tell you how your healers are doing, who is the healer on the enemy team. Also very important to know. To enable it, again, simply go to Star Pass, Interface, and enable all these things here. Okay, but the really big deal, in my opinion, is the timers. So for timers, if you see, I have three windows here. Timers A, timers B, and timers C over here. Now, this one over here on the left side, I use to tell me when my relics are about to proc. So of course the relics that I'm using are these ones. They have a 30% chance to proc for an additional 3,752 power for six seconds, so a rather short window, and they can proc once every 20 seconds. So especially if you're playing a burst class, like I am right here with Tactics Vanguard, it is very important to know when your relics are about to proc so that you can stack your other offensive cooldowns on top of it or time your biggest hitting abilities with your Radic procs in order to really maximize your burst damage. To give you an example of what I mean, let's hit the dummy for a little bit. We see my Radic's proc, we can see the mastery surge and the power surge effect. And now up here, once they have proc, you see these timers. So if I would like to kill this target dummy, I would prepare him and I would wait until this timer has elapsed. Five seconds, four seconds. So I'm saving my energy burst, I'm saving it. And now once it's at zero seconds, 
I will throw my stuff. I will proc the relics. Here they go. And I'll do a big burst. And as you can see, the timer went off perfectly. And I hit both my energy bursts and my buffed uh, assault plastique during the proc window of my relics. To set this up, you need to go to the timers menu. And I have a lot of timers here. Don't worry about it. You simply go down here to settings. And then you can here create a new timer. Now I have already created them and the timers in question are called Power Search and Master Research. Power Search and Master Research, by the way, if you didn't know it, is the name of the buff that you get when your relics proc. Timer that you saw here will trigger whenever I gain the effect called Power Search. So the name doesn't actually matter. You can name this whatever you want, but the effect that whenever you basically gain this effect, which is called Power Search, this is what will be in the combat log, what the kind of the parser will look for. Then you trigger this timer and the timer has a duration of 19 seconds. Now, I choose 19 seconds, even though the internal cooldown of the relic is 20 seconds, so the relic can only proc once every 20 seconds, because there is a slight delay, and because I want to know when the relics are going to be ready, so I use 19 instead of 20 seconds, just to be a little bit ahead. You can choose where the timer will be displayed, so again, I'm displaying my relic timers here, this is the timer window A, but I could set it up to be in either of these windows over here, and that's really it. You just need to make sure that uh, source U is tracked because you want to track your own relics, not anyone else's relics. Once you have set this up, you click on save changes and you are good to go. But now comes the really crazy part because this tool also lets you track when any enemy in the war zone uses any ability. So for example, how to use this? Let's say anytime a sorcerer uses their bubble, then I want to see it here so that I know if they have it ready or not. Right? We know what is the cooldown on bubble, and yes, there are some talents that can reduce it, but basically we can know if a sorcerer has used a barrier within the last two minutes that they don't have it ready yet. So that is very important information, especially if you're playing a burst DPS, it allows you to make better decisions and figure out who you can kill and who you can't. So this is how I set it up. Again, you go into timers, you go into settings, and you create a new timer. I have created mine already. And it is called Bubble. This is how it looks. Now the difference here is that on the trigger I choose Ability Activated. Because again, Bubble is an ability, it's not an effect. So whenever someone uses this ability, and the source here is other, so I'm not tracking my own cooldown if I'm playing Sorcerer, I'm tracking everyone other than me. When anyone uses the ability Force Barrier, then this will start a timer with a duration of 150 seconds. Now, this is because a sorcerer might have the talent that reduces the cooldown of their bubble by, I think it's 30 seconds. So instead of three minutes, it will be two and a half minutes cooldown. So I'm erring on the side of caution. Of course, it might be that the sorcerer doesn't have this talent, but you know, uh, it's better to sometimes assume that someone has the cooldown, even though they really don't have it. But it's still better than bursting into a sorcerer that actually has bubble up. I'm displaying the color that looks kind of similar to the sorcerer, just helps me see it a little bit easier. And displaying with source, this will simply add the name of the sorcerer to this timer, which is really important because one note about this timer, and that's one of the limitations of this method, is that unfortunately I have not found a way yet to make it so that it tracks only the enemy cooldowns. So if you have a sorcerer in your team and they will use bubble, then it will also track that cooldown. So you're basically tracking everyone in the war zone other than you. If someone knows how to change that, please let me know. But for now, this is what I use and it works for me. But that's why it's very crucial that you include display with source here. So here is an example of how that works in practice. You can see the cooldowns here on the right side. And as you can see, our sage friend Peng Shuai has already used bubble and there are still one minute and 34 left on the timer. So we know he definitely doesn't have bubble. So we're targeting him, we're calling him as a target, and all of our DPS jump on him, and we proceed to kill him. Note that he also used face walk, which is another timer I have set up, so that's on cooldown now as well. Another thing that you can do is add a sound alert to a timer. So for example, if an engineering sniper puts an interrogation probe on you, then you know that most likely you are about to get bursted. So for that, I have set up a sound alert because that's even faster for you to notice. How that works is I've created a normal timer, which is triggering a timer every time that 
someone puts the effect interrogation probe on me. So the source is someone else, in this case a sniper, and the target is me. Only then does this, this trigger plays. And this is a trigger with a duration of zero seconds because I don't actually care how long ago I gained interrogation probe, that doesn't matter. I also have display untoggled, so this will not show up in either of my timer windows. The only thing it will do, it will play a sound. So I've checked the sound box here, and that means whenever I gain interrogation probe, it will play a sound. You can choose from this list here. They come pre-installed with the software. So every time I get an interrogation probe on me, you will hear the following sound. It's a trap. So this lets me know that I have to pop a defensive cooldown or call for guard or something like this because I am about to get bursted. Another thing I've set up is a timer whenever I get taunted. That is so I don't waste my burst. It works exactly the same as the interrogation probe timer and has a different sound. Patience. This one you might have heard on my stream so that I know when I am taunted. And then finally, I have some timers that are tracking when a player uses their CC breaker. Now this one is optional, but I like it. It can allow you to blow up an operative, for example, if they wasted their CC breaker or something like this. So this is how I set it up. You need to put the name of the actual ability in here and then have the exact duration of the cooldown and then it will track that. Okay, now I know what you are going to think. This is a lot of work. Maybe you don't want to set this up all by yourself. Good news is if you don't want to go through all the trouble to setting it up yourself, there is a way you can simply copy what I have. To do that, simply join my Discord. Link is, of course, in the description below. And in there, you will find all of my star pass timers in the shape of two XML files. Download those and then copy them into your star pass folder, overwriting the default timer files. For me, that folder is C users, then your username, app data, local, star pass, app client, app, and so on. And then you need to replace these two files with my files. When you do that, very important that you make sure to close star pass before copy pasting my files. Otherwise, the changes will not be saved. Then, once you start it up again, simply go to interface, make sure to turn on all the timers that you want, click on parse when you're in the game, make sure all of these are toggled on and under timers. You also need to make sure to toggle the timers that you want to have on active. Now, since have, people have asked me also, I have included my in-game interface as an XML file in the Discord if you want to use it. To do that, simply download the XML file called Nate Doge from my Discord and then copy paste it into your Star Wars game folder. For me, this is the path where you would need to copy that in. For you, it might look slightly different, but basically it needs to go in here. Then once you've done that, simply jump into the game, go to the interface editor, and you should see my interface here. So you are able to select it and then simply click on load the selected interface, and then your interface, your bars and everything should look like mine. All right, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully this little tip helped you do more DPS or more heals, whatever you do. If it did, please don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.